Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We're going to ask you to stand and just praise his name with us this morning. Put your hands together. Come, let us adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Look and adore Him. Will somebody help me sing? Worship and worship and adore Him. They call His name Emmanuel. 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 Somebody say His name again. Emmanuel. Hey, we worship. We worship. Somebody say, come.
rising to the setting sun. Love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. We'll sing praise.
as we lift you up, you will reign forevermore. The one who was and is to come, the God of every
can know your glory to say it with me. Somebody say, I need you more. I need you more. More than yesterday. I need you more. More than words can say. More than words can say. I need you more. Than ever before. Somebody say more than the air. More than the air I breathe. More than the song. More than the song I sing. More than the next song. Somebody say more than anything. More than anything. The Lord is time goes by. I will be by.
want to be your witness. You can take what's wrong me. and make it right. Oh, my Jesus, shine down on Let your love shine through in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow. And anywhere you open up, let your word speak to me. Show me things I've never seen before. Oh, Lord, I want to be your witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Oh, day stars shine. Oh, isn't that, isn't that what we need more than anything else? For let the Lord, His light, His love shine through us. That we may touch others. That when people get near us, they get God treated. Amen. Lily of the valley. Let your sweet aroma fill. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in thy sight. Fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of thy love. Oh, my Jesus, shine down on me. Oh, sing it, church. Somebody say, lead me, Lord, I'll follow and mean it. strong and make it right Jesus shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night somebody asked me for this song
that drummer can't drum and that keyboard can't key and the guitar can't guitar praise God the singers can yeah no 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 muchacha anybody got a Snickers bar <laughs> you may be seated if you can mama happy mother's day mama you guys are too special this service is dedicated we came here well I'll tell you about that in a minute but uh, I tell you what let's take the offering get that over of the way and continue our worship to that and then I got a short video and then I want to give you a gift mama amen father we just love you we thank you for bringing us here oh if you're watching thank you for joining us Tell us, give us a little note. Tell us if you need prayer for anything. And give us a praise report because we've been praying for those of have asked for prayer. And we just want to tell you we love you. Uh, Father, we just thank you for bringing us here. For, for just, you know what, Father? For bringing us here. For just being who you are, Lord. For meeting our needs according to your incredible riches and glory. Father, a special prayer for the Davilos family who Carlos lost his father this week. And we pray for that peace and joy that passes all understanding. For the family, Lord God, that you will see him through it. We love you. We praise you. Be pleased with our hearts as we give unto you. I love the Lord. I'm going to lift up and praise his holy name. Oh, come on, church. I love the Lord. up and praise his holy name there was a time there was a time a time when i was hungry there was a time a time when i was sick there was a time i didn't think i could take it but the lord oh he knew that i would make it i love the lord come on i'm gonna lift up and praise his holy name I love the Lord I'm gonna lift up and praise His holy name Para bailar la... No, man, eso es otro, eso es otro Amen. You, you guys are awesome. Yeah. You may be seated. Colorín Colorado. Guys, don't forget, ladies, this Saturday at 7 p.m. is Iron Sharpens Iron. At 7 o'clock, you don't want to miss it. It's an incredible time to fellowship with your sisters. Amen. Also on the 25th, I think it's the 25th. We'll let you know, but I think the men's, the little tickets, and by the way, I have five tickets left. 
You're going to get them, get them from me first, please, so I can get rid of them. You got a choice of a $10 meal or a $15 meal. Fish or what? Fish or pork or whatever. I got five tickets left and I need them gone. The rest will be embarrassed. Amen. So come and join us for that May the 25th. And mama, I just watch this and then we're going to a gift for you. This is a typical day in a mom's home. Amen. Come on up. Let me uh, let's honor our mothers. How many of you have ever had or have a mother? Say amen. amen. If you didn't say amen, please see me after service. <laughs> we really need to talk. Okay, let me just hand them to me a bundle all the time or whatever. If you're a mama or if you want to send your son or daughter to come up, we just want to give you a little token of our love and honor and appreciation. So come up and get your little flowers. Both of you grab it there and give it to your mama and tell her how much you love her. There you go. One bundle for mama, please. Thank you, son. Pick, pick one if you want. Amen. Amen. There you go. Which one you want? Doesn't matter. Hey, beautiful. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. We've made a mess, haven't we? <laughs> this is the mother of my babies. Appreciate you. Come and get your if.
please don't leave here without a flower if you're a mama. And remind us to sweep before we hand it over to the next service. Mama, did you get one? Amen. Let's dismiss the children quickly, quietly, reverently. Anybody that did not get one, please raise your hand and we'll make sure that you have one. I just want to tell you how much we love and appreciate you. And I pray this, this sermon expresses that. Not only expresses our heart, but especially expresses the, the heart of the Lord Jesus and God. Amen. I want you to know that we're here for two reasons. We're here for two reasons to this morning and two reasons only. One is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ with our worship. And the other is to honor you, Mama. And can I tell you that both are lifelong tasks. Neither of which can be confined to one sermon. Amen. I would imagine that this day can be one of the happiest. And it could also bring a lot of pain. For us who have lost our mother, I tell you right now that it's very seldom a whole week goes by that I don't talk to God since my father passed away and since my mother passed away and, and I talk to God and I tell them, Lord, could you tell my mother and my father that I love them and that I'm sorry. God. Could you tell them that I'm sorry for the times maybe that I wasted that I took them for granted. Could you tell them that I'm sorry for not being more there? For not telling them I love them more. If I've hurt them in any way, please tell them. Amen. Then there are those who are childless. Ladies who by the very nature that God has placed in them yearn to maybe have a child. and For one reason or another they... They can't. And they must endure another Mother's Day celebration with all the mothers receiving flowers and gifts. And to us who have lost our mother, the sadness, especially in days like this, returns. And I would imagine that anything that has ever been said or will be said in Spanish or English is eloquent enough or expressive enough to articulate the true value of a mother. I think the mother's the only creature on earth that can cry when she's happy, laugh when she's heartbroken, and work when she's sick. A mother is gentle as a lamb, but as strong as a lion. Amen? Mothers are teachers and disciplinarians. and They're cleaning ladies. And gardeners. And nurses. And doctors. And psychologists. Counselors and chauffeurs and coaches. Mama, you're a developer of personalities. You're molder of vocabularies and sharpeners of attitudes. Can I tell you that mother is the name of God on the lips of her children. The fact that God would use a human mother to bring his son into the world has bestowed upon motherhood. I believe its greatest honor. Mama, you are entrusted by God to prepare your children for a world you will probably never see. Young person, can I tell you this, and I pray you take this with you this morning. You cannot be wrong with your mother and be right with God. Oh, can I say that again? 
you cannot be wrong with your mother and be right with God. I would imagine that moms and dads here, but moms, I'm zeroing on you today. You would agree with me when I say that to have a child is to decide forever to have your heart go walking outside your body. I like what Irma Babank wrote in Forever Emma. She said this. She said, children are like kites. You spend, you spend a lifetime trying to get them off the ground. You run with them until you're both breathless. They crash, you add a longer tail. You patch, comfort, adjust, teach, and assure them that someday they will fly. Finally, there comes a day when they are airborne, but they need more string, and you keep letting out. And you realize that we... With each twist of the ball of twine, the kite becomes more distant. And you know that it won't be long before that beautiful creature will snap the lifelong, lifeline that bound you together and soar free and alone. And then maybe in your loneliness you will realize that you've done your job. Go with me this morning to the book of Exodus. And we're going to look at a story and we're going to glean those things that God has allowed us to glean. Amen. Chapter 1 verse 15 says this. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives of whom the name of one was Shifra and the other, the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stools. If it's a son, then you shall kill him. But if it's a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male child alive. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mightily. Stop right there for a second, Carolina. I want to add this to this. That Can I tell you this, beloved? That governments and kings and authorities might tell us something, but if God tells us different, we follow God, not them. And so it was because the midwives feared God that he provided households for them. So Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive. And the men of the house of Levi went and took us a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him there three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him and dubbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and her maidens walking along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maid, maiden went and called the mother's child. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to the Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. Can I tell you, by, by reading that little story, we have so much a, a sermon unto itself, that God is a God who provides. 
Not only did he provide life for that little boy and pregnant, watch, she says, and she put him in an ark, which speaks of Jesus. Pitched it with pitch, which speaks of the Holy Spirit. And when you're in the ark riding in Jesus and you are placed in the Nile where the hippo and the crocodile and snakes and things, how many of you know that those speaks of demons and God protects you even in that? Then when you're safe in Jesus, it doesn't matter what you're traveling, where you're traveling, it matters who you're traveling in. Can I get an amen? Not only that, he provided not only that safety, and this is not even in my sermon, Mama. I just want to bring you in so that you can understand the incredibleness of this. Not only that, but he not only that, he found favor with Pharaoh's daughter, protected this young man, Moses, because he had a plan for him in the future. He also has a plan for you, too. All of us here. And took him to his own mother who nursed him and got paid for doing it. What an incredible God we have. Amen? What an incredible God we have. God's good. The devil's bad. All right. I just want to make sure. My question to you, Mama, this morning is what makes you so strong? As I pastor for many years, I see the involvement of the women in most churches, not only fusion, versus that of the men. And I wonder... What makes you so strong, Mama? After years of being messed on and messed over. After years of being walked on and walked out on. How is it that the pharaohs of this land have failed to kill your spirit? What makes you so strong, Mama? After all this world has done to you, the abuse and the misuse. After all the ways man has exploited and humiliated you. What makes you so strong? How is it that you can do all that you do? I looked at my mom and I remember my mom, six children. My father walked, working all the time, and my mother would take us everywhere, and, 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 uh, incredibly. Can I tell you something, my sister? Listen to me carefully. You may not have the wealth of Melania Trump, but you have the faith of the widow of Zarephath. You may not have the political power that can even let you get away with murder like Hillary Clinton. But you can pray like Hannah. You may not sing like Adele. But you can dance for the Lord like Miriam. And magnify the Lord like Mary. Amen. You are mothers who know how to love. You are daughters. Who know to have compassion. You are wives who know how to stand by your man and give godly advice and be godly helpmeets. I think you're the women with backbone and keepers of the flame. Just like the women in our text. Women who represent the Lord. Women of fusion working together to save an endangered generation. How many of you know that we live in perilous times? And can I tell you, Mama, your strength can be seen in your actions during these perilous times. These are times and we are witnessing some of the most demonic attacks on the church and Christianity. The Bible, the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says there was kind of time and there is a time where they're going to call right wrong and wrong right and black white and white black and things upside down and up. We are living those times. And it takes a man, it takes a woman of God to be able to stand and have nothing move them. A man or a woman, especially mama, who won't compromise. Amen? These are times that we still find ourselves living in the land of the pharaohs. Pharaohs who rather pass out condoms than Bibles in our schools. Pharaohs who will call you if your child calls from the clinic 
to give her an aspirin, but will take that child to get an abortion. Pharaohs, and you might not believe this if you if you're not aware of it. Pharaohs who are teaching our children in this country to pray to Allah three times a day, but they can't mention the name of Jesus. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Pharaohs who rather praise and accommodate the enemy than to protect his citizens. In this land of the Pharaoh, we protect the spotted owl. Allow the enemy to infiltrate our borders by the thousand while turning our backs on our veterans. And our, our homeless and our helpless. In this land of the Pharaohs, we are being told to make bricks without straw. And this Pharaoh has demanded we worship him. Some of, some of you mamas and my brothers have remained faithful and will not compromise. I was telling somebody the other day that my motto has always been since I was young, death before this honor. And I think some of us and our children don't compromise do much to the strength of you women. So my question still stands. So what makes you so strong, my sister? What words of wisdom can you give this new generation of young women coming up? How can you help? How can we create more holy women of God and less hoochie mamas? How can we introduce to the world more ladies with integrity than vixens with attitudes? How can we as men treat you as the gifts from God that you are? Can I get an amen, men? I saw three of you that didn't say anything. Don't look at your wife. Can I tell you mothers that we love and appreciate you? What makes you so strong? With all my heart, I think it's your godliness. Can I tell you that a godly woman is a woman of strength? And I need you to understand this because people confuse the two. I want you to understand, my sister, that there's a big dis difference between a strong woman and a woman of strength. You see, a strong woman works out every day to keep her body in shape. But a woman of strength kneels in prayer to keep her soul in shape. A strong woman isn't afraid of anything. But a, a woman of strength shows courage even in the midst of fear. A strong woman won't let anyone get the best of her. But a woman of strength gives the best of herself to everyone. A strong woman walks sure-footly. But a woman of strength knows God will catch her when she falls. A strong woman wears the look of confidence on her face. But a woman of strength wears grace. Oh, snap. You, you'll get this stuff on the way home, I think. I'm getting the chicken pops. A strong woman has faith that she's strong enough for the journey. But a woman of strength has faith that it's in the journey that she will become strong. It's when those things go bump and squeeze you in the world and you feel like you're and God shows up. It's when you feel like quitting but you take one more punch that God shows up. Because your faith, my sister, is like film is developed in the dark. When you have nothing, you know where to look but up. And you say, oh Lord, and God shows up. And you teach that to your children. 
When I examine the women in our text, I notice some qualities that I see in many of you. I see it in my wife, Patty, and I want to tell her how much I love her. And that I'm so proud of her and what she's done with our children, even when I was gone. And these women knew when to step in and get involved. Women who weren't afraid to stand firm for the righteousness of God. As I read the word, I, I notice Queen Esther who took against a stand against the king Xerxes. And she even went as far as to say this. If I perish, I perish. In other words, she was saying for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. No trate de sonsacarme because my father is God and there's no one greater. Women who are not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Queen Esther. That's what made Pharaoh's daughter so beautiful and strong. Her willingness to reach out to those crying for help. And can I tell you that I, I, I don't know what she looked like. But I would suggest to you that what made her so beautiful were not her looks. But her love. Notice that the Bible doesn't describe. Oh she was beautiful. She had her papa aquí. Oh she parecía un pianito. No, un piano, no. Una, una guitarra. You don't want to look like a piano. Un piano. Parecía un tambor. No, 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 no. Una guitarrita, chico. Anybody got a Snickers? <laughs> it was her love. It describes, and she had compassion. Her father had declared, hey, she went against her own father and had compassion on a Hebrew child. Mercy said no. What made her eloquent, eloquent was not her status, but her concern. Amen? It wasn't the cosmetics on her face. But the content of her character. Real beauty can be bought young lady. Real beauty radiates from the inside. You can't get it from the infomercials. You can't get it from Mary Kay or Maybelline or Avon. People ask me all the time, how much makeup should my wife wear? And I say to them, as much as she needs. But don't overdo it. Because the Bible teaches us to do it in moderation. My son Omar and I were talking about this yesterday. In moderation. Because wherever you go, whatever you say, whoever you hang with, you're representing Christ. Amen? Amen? You can't get it from Calvin Klein. You can't get it from Oprah, Martha Stewart, or Gucci. Real beauty comes from doing good rather than looking good. Now you're looking good, good whether you do good now. Don't confuse don't confuse You want to look good and do good at the same time. Oh, she looks good and she's doing good too. Can I tell you that when you do good, you look good. Amen? Amen. I think this is what made this princess of the Nile such a beautiful queen. I think this world will be much so much better if we had more women of virtue who are willing to treat other children as their own. Who minister to the young ladies that God has placed in their lives and allow them to learn to be women. If only we had more women who are not filled with jealousy and envy. And could trust each other and work together for the benefit of our children. I can understand the world being like that. But to tell you the truth, it's hard for me to understand the church being like that. Because I don't know about your verse or what version of the Bible you read. But the one I teach from says that God has made me a new creature. And all things are passed away and behold everything is new. So I shouldn't be acting or talking or living or doing or hanging with the things I did old. 
The Bible says, teaches us in the book of Galatians to listen to, the, and, and these, these are the fruits of the Spirit, and one of them is love. The Bible teaches in Corinthians to watch, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not boastful, not jealous, not envious. What is it? Oh, if we can only, and that song that my son sang, that song that says, oh, I, want, I don't want to go back to being the old person. Oh. If only we had matriarchs who were willing to help our younger children in the bond of sisterhood and not feel threatened or intimidated. We only had more women who could take the time to mentor young girls in the rights of womanhood. One of the things I love, one of the things I've always wanted to do in my ministry in a, in a, a, is to teach young men to be men. And I want my wife and especially the ladies God has placed under us to y women to teach women to be women. You say, well, that doesn't go without saying. No, it doesn't. We have lost what it means to be a man or a woman anymore. A man of God, a woman of God, of righteousness, of truth. Think about that. We've redefined gender, so somebody needs to teach. Who knows, my sister? You never know when your words may be the words that lift someone up from the sea of sin. You know that little poem that I always say, it says, is anybody happier because you passed this way? I'm speaking to you, sister. Think about this. Is anybody happier because you passed this way? Does anyone remember that you spoke to them today? Is that man whose hopes were fading now with courage look ahead? Did you waste a day or lose it? Was it well or sorely spent? Sister, did you leave a trail of kindness or a scar of discontent? As you close your eyes tonight in slumber, my sister, listen, do you think that God will say, you have earned one more tomorrow by the work you did today? Oh, hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Who knows, my sister? Maybe it's your words, your life, God through you that lifts someone up from the sea of sin. Because the Bible teaches us this word is good for correction, instruction, and righteousness. Maybe it's your word, your your counsel, my sister, that will cause that young girl to wait for marriage prior just to having casual sex. To let her know that her body now belongs to the Lord. That lust will hand out a condom, but love will hand out a ring. Maybe it's your word, mama. But we'll keep that young man, that young woman to stay in school and not join the local gang. To stay away from drugs. Maybe it's your life, your word, mama, that will keep that person, that young man, that young woman to turn his life towards Christ. Because you took the time to nurture and to love and to uh, speak into their life. And some of you do that. This is what makes you so special. Mothers. Oh, mama. My mother was all this too. 
I'm not going to cry. Mothers are blowers of noses and washers of ears, smoothers of bump spots and wipers of tears. Scrubbers of dishes and wielders of mops. Grandmas for dollies and winders of tops. Bathers of babies and umpires of spats. Finders of slippers and mittens and hats. Helpers with lessons and makers of beds. Shakers of dust cloths and combers of heads. Button so honors and winders of clocks. Menders of dresses and darners of socks. Mothers are tellers of stories and readers of books. Judges and juries of conducts and looks. Doctors for heartaches and hearers of prayers. Mothers are generals directing all family affairs. Tenders of fires and builders of men. Oh, for the gift of an adequate pen to express mothers. Beloved, there's no adequate pen or adequate words to express how much we owe our mothers for their hard work and good words. For their loving deeds. I would imagine that if I had one one of the one of my wishes was to be able to tell my mom, Mima Bedona me Mima. Can I tell you something, young people? Listen to me. And I've seen this a lot. It's unfair for you to be kinder and more considerate and more patient with your friend's mother than your own. I would imagine that if some of you treated your friends like you treat your mom, you wouldn't have any friends. And if you treated their mom like you do yours, their mom wouldn't let, let them let you inside their house. Your mom deserves better. <laughs> I would imagine that it would be impossible. You can stay here, I guess, all day or night or whatever. It would be impossible for you to count all the meals. <laughs> for you to count all the meals. All the things your mom has done for you. I will venture to say that if I open the pulpit, if I open the pulpit, I would guess that everyone here would have something to say about their mother. Amen? I want to say for you mothers, To put God first in your life. I would say to my own wife. To put God first. Before me. Before anything. The Bible says. Seek first the kingdom. And all these things will be added unto you. Amen. I'm going to open up the floor. And I'm going to ask if anything. Anybody here wants anything to say. To your mother. And I'll give you a few minutes to do that right now. Anybody? Yes. Miguelito. Oh my goodness.
Miguelito, what is he saying? Somebody? Oh, my goodness. He's saying you are too be so beautiful? Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? He's singing, you are so beautiful to me. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Mama's not here, but she'll most likely watch. Um, Mama, I love you. You are my, my rock. Tu eres mi, mi piedra. Amen. Tu me hiciste hombre. Yo te quiero con todo mi corazón. I Amen. Love you, Mama. Uh, Miss Patty, Miss Kathy, Miss Sandra, Rosie, Thelma. You guys are awesome examples of, of mothers, and I love you guys. Amen. Anybody else? My mom is not here, but I hope she's watching. <laughs> um, I basically grew up without a father. I mean, I had a stepdad, but um, my mom was my mom and my dad for me and for my brothers and sisters. I want to say uh, thank you for like being always there. She worked two jobs always. I mean, like my mom was is my rock. Um, Emma, um, I love you so much. Thank you for everything you do. You are amazing. You are not my mother-in-law. You're my mom, too. I love you. Anybody else? Papa Louie. Carol, if you have it, my thing on you, bring it to me, please. I, I just wanted to say... I know I could be the father of all of you. I'm only not. But I also remember my first one that I lost, I was seven years old, was my grandmother, the one that delivers me into this world. And then in 1954, I lost my mother and my father. And then in 1964, I lost my brother next to me. But you want to know something? My reward was that I got a beautiful daughter, and I got a wonderful wife, that she became everything in my life. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank him first, and thank the two, two beautiful girls that I got right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? I just, I just want to thank my mom for going above and beyond and raising me from the age of zero to 20 and up. <laughs> I think it would be impossible to count all the meals and all the dinners. Or the sleepless nights. The room cleanings. Still for you, Danny. <laughs> Amen. And she says so, too. Baths and laundering she has done. Yes. Well, I was going to say thank you to Miss Patty, but you beat me. Especially to, to my grandma and to my aunt and to... My other tia who's here, um, they've done a lot for me in my life. I mean, I'm only 21, still young, but I've got a, they've done a lot for me. They've, they've helped me in a lot of ways. My mom especially. My mom's not here either, but um, there's a lot of women in here that have helped me in little, little things. And Cassidy has helped in a lot of ways. And I just, just want to say thank you to everybody, to Letty, to everybody who's here that has helped me in little ways that you could. And it, it means a lot. And I appreciate it, even though if I don't tell you. I don't see you enough to tell you. I appreciate all of you guys a lot. Thank you. Amen. 
And they need a sincere thank you for the many ways they've shown love. Mom, I just want to tell you happy Mother's Day and I love you. Amen. All right, Victor. <laughs> Beloved, I want you to know she loved you enough to hug you when you didn't even want to be hugged. When you were too old to think that you even needed a hug. She lo loved you enough to bug you about where you were going, what time you were going to get home. She loved you enough to discover your friends was a creep. She loved you enough to stand over you for two hours while you cleaned your bedroom. A job she could have done in 15 minutes. <laughs> Amen. True story? <laughs> she loved you enough to to let you stumble, fall, and hurt, and, and fail. She loved you enough to accept you for what you are and not what she wanted you to be. Most of all, beloved, she loved you enough to say no when she knew you would hate her for it. I would imagine that we owe her a thank you for just the influence she's had in our life. I don't think we could ever, ever repay her, but I think we ought to die trying. Amen? Amen? I thank God for my mother. I thank God for my the women who have spoken into my life. My wife, my, my daughter, my, my family members, my nieces, my grandmother. I thank God also for the daughters and the mothers and the sisters he has placed under me at Fusion. That continue to love me and encourage me and, and push me to be better. For the daughters that he has placed and has given Patty and I to fill that void of the empty nest. Thank God for that. I thank God for, for you ladies here at Fusion. That you would sit under me as a, as a pastor. It's, it's amazing to me. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you for your love and for your patience. My mothers and daughters and sisters. Co-laborers. Disciples students, friends here at Fusion. Thank you, sweetie. Bless you. I love you and I want to honor you this morning. May I pray to God that we're never too busy to too busy for mom. I thank the Lord that he, even while he was being crucified, he was watching over his mother. That he took care of her needs even while being crucified. I thank the Lord and may the Lord help us to be never take her for granted again. If you have a mother, show her you love her. Don't just tell her. I think there's no love like your love, Mom. No stronger bond on earth. Like the precious bond that came from God to you, Mom, when you gave birth. Your love is forever strong, never changing for all time. And when your children need you most, Mom, your love will always shine. 
God bless you, special mothers. God bless you, everyone, for all the tears and heartaches and for the special work you've done. And when your days on earth are over, Mom, your love will still live on through many generations with God's blessing on each one. Beloved, be thankful for your mothers for they love with a higher love from the power of God has given them and with strength as from above. We love you, Mama. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord continue to shine through you and be gracious to you. May he use you mightily, Mom. May the Lord put a hedge of protection around you and keep your mind and heart from pain. May your husband, your children, and those around you maybe for the first time realize how special and how important and show you that kind of love. And I speak for all men here, not only husbands and sons, but I want to tell you that please forgive us if we've offended, if we've hurt, if we neglected, if we failed to show you this love. You're a daughter of the living God. And upon you, God has bestowed the most incredible honor that he's bestowed upon you the ability, the privilege of bringing forth a child that God used Mary, even when she was a teenager, to bring forth the son of the living God, Emmanuel, God with us. And if you stop to think about that, you will be maybe speechless for hours because it's mind-boggling how sons of God and daughters of God have become that way. And the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve neglected and rejected of every God who created them. He sent his son to be born of a woman that we may be like him. Amen? We love you. We thank God for you. And that's all I got to say about that. I want you to know that, Mama, listen to me carefully. This is for everyone here, but especially for Mama. Listen to me. And I think I know just about everyone here. I think I know just about everyone here. And if I were to say, listen, that you will never be complete. You will never be a complete woman, nor I will ever have become a complete man until we receive this life given by God. That we're only a semblance of what God created us to be because when Adam disobeyed God, the life of God left him. So Adam and Eve then started procreating and having babies separated from God. And even then, you have so much of God in you, Mama, that even a mom that doesn't know the Lord, who hasn't received life, for the Bible teaches for as many, and I'm going to put mama in there for you, for as many mom that receive my spirit, to them I give the power to become my daughters. But even before you did that, you have the instinct placed there by God himself to love your child, to nurture, to take care of them, to protect them even at the risk of your own life. Can you imagine a mother who has that already residue of God so built in her that after when she understands that she herself needs that heavenly father and she receives his life, she becomes, instead of one half, she becomes complete in him. And that what you're already feeling, Mama, will double. Because not only is not that coming out of the flesh, 
but now is coming out of the Spirit, and the two will be fused as one. Amen. The Bible says that when you receive, when you confess with your mouth, the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 9 and 10, that when you confess with your mouth, when you understand and come to understand that we and men and women are empty without the life of God, that we need His life, that apart, his, apart from His life, there's no way we can enter the kingdom of God. And you confess and you say, I, I understand, I believe, I, 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 I confess with my mouth, and I'll say it in front of everybody, that this man by the name of Jesus is God. And he came to the earth. He walked among men. He was crucified, buried in, I believe in my heart that three days later he rose from the dead. The Bible says the day you do that, you will be born again into his family. And you for the first time ever, mama, for the first time ever, my brother, will be able to say to God, not only are you my creator, you're my father. And you will be sealed with the Spirit until the day of redemption, never to lose his life again. So I'm going to ask you a question, Mama. We're here to honor because you gave birth to a child. We're here to honor you. But I'm going to ask you a question. Have you been born again into his family? You've had life born from you. And you were born from your mama and we honor her. But have you been born into the family of Christ? You say, well, I believe. I'm not asking you if you believe. The demons believe and they tremble, the Bible says. Have you been born into his life? He said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you have to be born again. We were born from our mama. Now we need to be born from our papa. How do you qualify that, pastor? Let me ask you a question, and I want you to be honest. We're here at church. All of us have done it, so I'm going to ask you a question. God forbid, the Bible teaches us, God forbid, something were to happen to you and your life was required. The Bible teaches us that we were created in the image of God and that we will go one of two places, either with God or separated from God. We are eternal creatures. So I'm going to ask you today, Paul said this, man, if I were to die today to be absent from the body, if my soul would leave my body, I would be in the very presence of God. So my question to you, especially to you, everyone here, men and women, but especially to my mama, especially to my sisters. Could you say that with Paul today? Could you say, man, God forbid, I don't know what's happening or what could happen, and I pray his angels around you, but if my life was required today, I would be, I know for a fact, the Bible says, 1 John 5, 13, you can know you have eternal life. You don't have to guess, I kind of should, I could, if I'm good enough, no, 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 there's nothing you can do, the Bible says, for all, for the wages of death, the sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Not of yourselves, the Bible teaches, lest any man should boast. You need to receive his life. Have you done it, Mama? What? I think what better day to be born again than on Mother's Day? And can I tell you that God is both mother and father? In other words, he is complete. Now, he is a father and because of the authority that comes with that. But God is complete. He knows you in and out. He knows, Mama, what you need. He'll meet your needs according to his riches. Have you received this life? Maybe you're here today and you say, well, you know what, Pastor, I've been to church. I've gone this. I'm not there. I've only, this is my first time. If I were to, God were to call my life, if something were to happen and I was to die today, I'm not sure where I go. Would you pray for me? Because I want to receive that Jesus. Just in case there's somebody, and I think I know everybody here, but just in case there's that one person who the Lord is touching their heart and say, you know what? I need to be born. I need that Jesus. My life needs to change. I want to pray for you. Is there anyone here that would need prayer? If not, we'll just dismiss and you go enjoy your day. Anyone needs prayer to, I need that Jesus this morning. Everybody here knows him. Amen. But then go and work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Let him so live through you, mama, that you, you radiate in other people's lives. Amen. Don't forget Saturday, ladies. 
Iron Sharpens Fire. Come and be here, man. My goodness. But I hear you guys have such a good time. If it wasn't against the Lord, I'd dress up like a girl and come myself. A very ugly girl. But you, hey, you can still use me. Stand and I'm going to dismiss you with Aaron's blessing. <laughs>